He's a machine, Pete, isn't Alex? Look at the, the machines. Got, uh, it's Dave Attenborough voice when you do it. Oh, yes. <laughs> My name is David Attenborough, and you are watching Build with A and E. Here we see Pete and Alex, who are absolute machines. From huge extensions to fine joinery details. Join us as we take a look at some of the best builders across Warwickshire. Hey guys, how you doing? So it's Monday morning, it's a lovely day. We're not having to deal with rain. Last week you absolutely lashed it down, absolute nightmare. But today is a lot, lot better day. The client has decided to put a rainwater harvesting system in the back garden, just so there's got additional water for the back garden, really, which is gonna go over there. So we're gonna get that sorted out and get that done, which would be good. The one thing I don't wanna be doing is digging a load of mud as I then get the MOT to land, then also you then get the pea gravel to land. So we want to crack that out as quickly as possible because uh, as I'm going to start to lose time and time's money. And what we're going to be doing is working on the drains. Now you can see here, I've started to mark up the drawings. Now the, the pink bits are all to do with the falls of the flat roof that we're going to be doing. So we're going to ignore them now. The blue ones are going to be the relevant drains. Now you can see here, I've got an upstand for a pipe coming through and that's for this bathroom here. We've then got another upstand coming through, an eight inch wall, stud wall that we're gonna be doing here. That'll then be for then this ensuite suite then here. The other thing we've got to do is then obviously put a couple of T's in place because we've got the kitchen sink to be done. And then also we've got the pantry that's gonna have a sink in it as well. So we'll end up putting a T piece in here now as well because the clients decide they're gonna have a sink here, which is fine. We then got this other pipe then to run here as well. Toilet's going in here, as you can see. And then we've got a tee off for the sink, a tee off then for this utility area here. But the other thing we do is that there's been very lucky, there's an outside stand pipe here. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna connect all of these runs into this uh, vent pipe here, which will be absolutely brilliant. So we know that these then vented with a, a really good four inch pipe running through uh, the side of the building here, which is really good. The other thing is you can see all the relevant steels that we've got to put in place which we're going to do and then these are the columns that are uh, got to go in so 152152 post that's a 152152 post this is a 254 for 254 and then the rest of these here are 178s this one is actually a 1521523 steel beam gross and that's a 90 post and that's a 90 post there so we've got a lot of work to do so we're just going to crack on right let's get on with it let's get going see you in a bit Invert the drain down there. So what we're going to do now is just measure the land now to see how much we can drop down. So let's see what we got. Here we go. See it now. 20 mil, 10 mil. Wow, we've got loads. Because obviously we want one in 64. Look at that. So we've got from there all the way down to there. So that measurement we've got 600 and 650. We've got absolutely acres are full there so what we're going to do we'll do a 1 and 60 all the way through to that chamber on the outside me and Pete are going to put that chamber in and then be about it when we're done okay. so what we'll do we'll get uh, 45 on there now we'll get this chamber set yeah yeah we'll put a ring on it just so we don't get in there yeah okay but now i can see Pete, and that goes up tight there we've got the little grind you just sort of got see how solid that is that's all concreted in that is there lovely so that's why I'm not taking that off because these pipes are only two foot pipes. So now, because this is really nice, it's all it's it. Absolutely lovely that is. I make sure I can get onto those really nicely. So that's now slipped on, absolutely beautiful. And the one thing we'll do is I'll actually tighten this one onto there.
We've got the manholes in now. We've just done a connection, an AC4000 connection to the clay. It's not a QAC, is it? It's an AC4000. You've been saying that for the last yes. 12 months. I know, oh, no, I've said it for years, QAC, <laughs> I don't know why. It's been a bit of anyway, a so, joke. Yeah, <laughs> So guys, what I've been doing is I've been lining up the manholes and it's really important when you line the manholes, obviously when the extension goes up, the manholes are exactly the same measurement off the building because when you come to lay your patio, whether it's porcelain or whether it's some Indian sandstone, it's really important that the manhole covers line through beautifully. It's, it's nothing worse, well, me personally, nothing worse than not seeing in line. Now, this is the water tank that we're actually going to be fitting. Uh, we've gone online, the client's got a lovely allotment in the back garden and what they want to do, they've had a water shortage of the last few years so what we're going to be doing is digging this cylinder in I've spoken to their technical side their turn man says you need 150mm concrete as a base and then you need 150mm concrete all the way around it we've got some riser rings, we've got a hidden manhole cover going on top the size of it in height is 1500 the width is 1300 so I'm going to dig 300 all the way around and then that will then uh, allow me then to get in, clean it all off, 300 onto 1300 is 1600. So I'm literally going to do a 1600 square. Now this line here represents the centre of my manhole. So I'm going to now put a cross in it, like that. So it's very smooth, very music about marker paint, isn't it? I'm just going to uh, dig that square out nice and neatly now. And then that'll be then, I've got to dig it down to two metres deep. And then I'm away then guys. So what we've been doing over here, obviously getting the drains through. We're doing a one in 64 uh, all the way through over to there. You can actually go right down to one in 80. You can do one in 40, one in 60. The runs I'm doing, I'm really happy with one in 60. We've just got that pipe to go in today. Once that's in, I'll start clearing back the land after I've dug this, because there's always a process guys. You've always got to think about the process, getting the material out. So what I've done is I've cleared this all back, got them two drains in. I'm now going to dig that so I can run this and get the material out. And then the last thing I'll then work my way out. Tomorrow I've got 20 tonne of MOT coming. Probably going to get a bit more 10 mil pea gravel here to obviously finish all the drains off. Now the one thing I do do, I don't backfill with clay. Just think, uh, Robbie Moore always taught me, I literally use pea gravel, then stone up with MOT. It stops any sinkage or anything, which is a better job for me personally. Uh, I think that was always a great shout by Robbie, so right, let's go and crack on. It was really difficult to get in, so what you do is get a shawl, back up a shawl and watch this. Okay, so me and Tony are about to start getting these pipes instated. Now, little trick. The four leads to 60 to one, which is for every 60 inches, it has to fall one inch. So if you just measure 60 inches on your spirit level, put a one inch packer, pull the pipe until it's level, you know it's always right. Don't need laser levels, don't need anything complicated, do it old school. Basically what we're doing is we're digging the chamber over there uh, for the water tank for Neville Collect's garden. 
And then you've got Alex and Pete working inside, just finishing those T sections off so we can run this pipe through. The one thing that we always do is, that even though we've got the power blade, it's, it's, it's on the money with the fall, we'll run it all through, but we'll put a string line straight down the center of the pipe. So when we set it up there, it'll be absolutely perfect. So it's got no waviness. The pipe's just lovely and constant and true. That's the real key thing. Yeah? So um, but they're nearly there, probably about another half an hour they'll be there with that so we should be really good to go and get some more pea gravel. Absolutely, look at that, how straight that pipe is. Do you know what? That excites me, that is. <laughs> Lovely straight pipe, look at that, beautiful, beautiful. So here we go, it's gonna be another late night. Yesterday was late, we finished about seven o'clock. Tonight it's gonna be about seven as well. But the one thing I love about summer, the light nights, you can just crack, crack on working. You know, I always have my weekends off now, I don't work weekends anymore. Through the week, I work like a lion. Keep going, keep going. All I think about is doing the getting the job done, and obviously earning a bit more money. What did we come here to get? Ten mil stone. So we've been loads and loads of drainage here. We've got to get the rest of the dig done. I've got then two tons to go into the back, so I'm going to slice the back because it's loose and better for me. This is quite therapeutic, this, isn't it? This oils, isn't this? Is. One thing I always do, me personally, is always about tendering out. Now it's really funny, this is uh, a load of the materials that we were buying at Hewers Grey. Obviously we tender out everything, always keep people on their toes. And actually MKM were in the last order, so that we got quick delivery coming from MKM. And obviously Hewers Grey, they weren't happy about losing it. I said, look, I said, it's all about saving the pennies. Well, you know, but you know, next time, that's it, I'll get the best look. But, business is business. The one thing I don't do is when I put this on the tender, I do not go back to the other merchant and go, oh, whatever it's cheaper, because that's cheaper. You don't do that in business. As far as I'm concerned, you go to one person, go to them, get the tender, that's it, that's what you do. So it's really key that you're always dead straight. I know that just happened. So I always make that very clear. If you win the tender, you win the tender. If you don't, you don't. That's it, that's business. Right, we're getting going. We've got the job to do is get some drainage going. Now the one thing I do when I put my pipes in, I don't just push them in, I give them a couple of twists like that and it really does make a difference when you're trying to get the pipe in. Uh, the other thing is try and dry your hands as well uh, because obviously it helps when you're 
moving the pipe and then obviously if you're really struggling and it's not going in just put a back of the shovel behind the pipe that's what I sometimes do do is I centralise it up so it gets this bottom and I'll put the shovel on the slight angle onto the next one so now I'll clean that out move to the next one same again got no rubbish going into it on the slight angle There you go, that's gone all the way up. The tea's gonna go in, I'll just get myself a couple of bricks like that, you see? Because I don't want the tea going in all this wet mud. Gonna rest it here. Now, that's actually for the sink to the utility. So now I'm happy with the way that's coming through. Lining through with the center of my pipe there. I'm just gonna give myself a measurement now to connect that up. Now I know the collars go in over here to that point. So I'm going to measure from the inside of the collar that goes into the pipe up to that. We're looking at 1900 guys. So let's get a couple of lengths of pipe here so we can do all the cuts. We used to have a pool that I've left it at the unit that you spin on the end, put it into the end of a cordless. Pete bought it, it's a really, really great tool and it sort of puts the arras on the end for you. Many years ago I always used to file it but then I thought Get the grinder blade, a continuous grinder blade. That's why when I'm doing pipe work, I don't use this type. I don't use that. I use a continuous blade like this, just better. So I'm now going to put a leading edge all the way around that. Looking at that, just see this. So what I'll do is I'll take a datum height here, datum height here set it where it needs to be set, string line and then here gravel, that's it. Boom, absolutely beautiful that is now. Outside gully, that's then gonna go on if the client wants a rod and eye, but obviously that will then take the storm from over there as well. And then obviously it'll run across from this onto Y so it can vent as well. So massive win, win, win. The thing I do, love doing about the drainage. I love lining it through, I hate to see wavy pipes. Um, the other thing is you know you're going to absolutely spot on there as well. So what we're going to do is wrap the line around. So I'm going to get some weight on there now. That's it, stop moving. I need to move this joint here slightly that way, it looks it. Like that. What you will do, so when I start to put the stone in. And that one there, in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather that out with my small half shovel and then the rest will line through absolutely beautiful. So that's how I like to do my pipes. I make sure they're nice and level all the way through with the string line but then also the string line's down the centre of the pipes as well. So it's then absolutely perfect. So as I put the stone in I'll just lift that up and that'll be perfect. Okay, two, three mil. That pipe down there, the top of the pipe comes to there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see what the difference is, measure that distance there to make sure I've got then the 1 is 64 to 1. That's up there. That. Now what I'll do is I'll just measure now between the two lines. There's my first line, there's my next line. I've got quite a few inches there so it looks like I'm going to be well in. Which is what I want. I mean I can go to a 1 in 40, 1 in 80, 1 in 60. So you know ideally I normally work to 1 in 60. I'll work what this is at, I'll see the pipes, if it's between 140 and 160 I'll just leave it as it is, set my lines when I put my pea gravel, I'm away.
Basically guys, what we've got, Amtico flooring. Then we've got some self-leveling compound they always do, always use. I don't know why, because the liquid screed that we use is absolutely perfectly fat, but I don't know what it is. They just want to put it on top. Don't know why, but they do. We then got 150 mil of insulation going in. We've then got 150 mil of concrete going in. We've then got a 100 mil of stone and we've got 50 mil of sand blind on top of the stone. So we've got MOT first, sand, building the sand on top, then 150 mil of concrete. Obviously you've got a layer of damp there and a layer of damp on top of the 150 mil concrete. So one, two, three layers of DPM. You've then got 150 mil of Celotex. And then you got the liquid screed then on top, and that's it. Boom. Three layers of damp. So, let me tell you a story. <laughs> We've been literally, we shifted nearly 20 tonne of soil today. We've moved in six tonne of pea gravel. We've also now, by the end of today, we'll have shifted 20 tonne of stone in. We've uh, also got a load of pipe working all the way along here to a beautiful fall. Now, obviously when I do my fall, so you, anything from one in uh, 40 to one in 60, the, the lowest you can go is one in 80, but I don't quite like to do that unless I really have to. But um, it ended up at one in 54, which is absolutely beautiful. All we've now done is put a load of stone through. And um, tomorrow, where it's quite boggy here, we'll just flatten it, skim it off, and then what we're gonna do is put the hess here, that'll then stop the stone from sinking in. We'll put two layers on, and then we'll get all this stoned up. You can see we're starting to peg it out just to give us the guideline of where the stone's gonna be, and then we'll whack it all down. So we're just waiting for John Hughes Hollis to turn up with the next 10 ton. And yes, it's half past four and we won't be finished until probably about six, half six. But that's the way it is, that's the way it rolls. Getting the job done, cracked out. And you can see we just had 10 ton of MOT. This is our third load now. Beautiful that was, absolutely beautiful. You probably noticed we were in a really tight space here at the moment. So what I've actually done is put the digger onto the side of the mound. One of the things I am going to be doing is actually so I can get the dumpers running efficiently is I'm just clearing some of the stone away here because I don't want the uh, dumpers coming on the, to the side in a different way. If it was a lot bigger mound, I would actually um, climb on top of the mound. Uh, but that's like when you get 40, 50 ton delivered. Now MOT is limestone, it's uh, basically three quarter down. There's loads of different limestones. I mean, HS2 is taking that many tonnage, it's unbelievable. But it's also taking the next stone up. The lads at the moment are in the back as well, they're setting up the Hessian, because it's just rain to rain constantly. We've got a lot of clay on the ground. And what I do, I wouldn't just stick the clay, the MOT straight onto the clay because it would just sink straight in, guys. It would just be no good. So I've got this geo fabric, which is uh, used for laying over top of uh, really wet clay. Even though I've, I've took the surface off, what it allows me now to do is actually stops the stone from sinking in. Uh, but what I will do is I've told the lads to double it over uh, to make it even stronger. So.
last two ton of the MOT hopefully. We've had 42 ton of MOT. We've absolutely smashed it in the last couple of days. And I've just got this last two ton just to make sure there's no other little bits. But this will stay on the back of the truck just while we're finishing it again. It's up to damp because there's nothing worse. And then you suddenly think, oh, I need a little bit more stone. Got it, here we go. Wow guys, what an amazing week. I'm really, really pleased. The lads have absolutely smashed it all together. We've done a, a great teamwork. We've shifted uh, 45 ton of MOT. We've got the chamber dog ready for the rainwater harvesting. We've also got all of the drainage in, the run over on this side of the extension. The, ex the drainage through the side, got the drainage over there on the gully. Got the drainage ready on the gully here. We fitted one, two chambers. We got the gullies done at the front. We've absolutely smashed it this week and I'm really, really pleased. If you like this content or you'd like to see different type of content then just let us know or different ways for us to film it. But uh, and obviously we try and bring as many how-tos um, to you guys, but obviously it's quite difficult because we're obviously trying to get the job done as well at the same time. And make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Yeah, and hit that notification bell as well because then every time a video is uploaded, you'll be notified. Take care guys, have a great one.